everyone, today we are going to show off the top five weirdest reptiles in our zoo. We have 75 different exhibits here at Snake Discovery, and some animals are definitely weirder than others. So today we are going to share with you, again, the top five weirdest animals we have here in the zoo, starting with the fifth weirdest in our opinion, and ending with truly the weirdest animal we have at Snake Discovery. The first one is right over here. Number five on today's list is the brown kukri snake. I actually need a hook for this one because of how unique this species is. Ours is a red phase, which is why she's a bit redder than they usually appear in the wild, but the brown kukri snake is native to southern Asia where they live in like mountainous forests and they stay relatively small in size. They only get to about three feet long as adults. This is a fully grown adult. Uh, she's about two and a half feet long so a relatively small snake. The kukri snake's diet includes frogs and lizards but they especially like eggs and the reason why this snake is number five on our weirdest reptiles list and the reason why I have to use a hook is because of their teeth. In addition to the small like fang shaped teeth that all snakes have, the kukri snake also has a pair of enlarged teeth in the back of its mouth, and they are shaped like kukri knives. This is of course why they're called the kukri snake, and those uh, teeth help them slice open eggs, whether bird or reptile, so that they can eat the tasty insides. Their teeth are also used for self-defensive measures. If they are being attacked by a predator, they can simply whip their head to the side and slice open that predator, and that's why I'm using a hook, because she knows she has big, sharp sharp teeth in the back of her mouth, and she will use them if she has the chance. We've seen some really <laughs> gnarly bites or slashes from a kukri snake, and we don't want to go to the hospital tonight. No, because of their teeth and, you know, the fact that they have a really small head and really no neck, there's not a good way to safely restrain these guys or hold them around their head like you can with other snakes to restrain them, because they just slip out of it or they twist their head and they can still reach you with those back teeth. The kukris, however, are not venomous. They just cause a lot of like mechanical or physical damage with their bites, but they are not venomous, which is weird because this snake, as far as I'm aware, is the only species that has enlarged back teeth that is not mildly venomous. Hognose snakes have enlarged back teeth. They're mildly venomous. Other snakes, like Baron's racers, have enlarged back teeth. They're mildly venomous. False water cobras. False water cobras. Yeah, there's a bunch of different species species out there, but the kukri is not venomous at all. So scientists actually wonder if this is an evolutionary link that shows us they are on their way to becoming venomous. So because of their strange tooth shape and size, the kukri snake is number five on our weirdest snakes at Snake Discovery. They're pretty weird, but we've got weirder. Number four on our list is the shield-tailed agama. These guys are stupid cute. They are the most adorable little agamas out there in my opinion. They only grow to about three to four inches long. They live in Africa in very dry, almost desert-like conditions, and they are primarily insectivores, but they do occasionally eat some vegetation from time to time too. As babies, by the way, they're only half an inch long. They are so, so oh tiny. Oh my goodness, and how, how big is she, would you say? This little girl is about two and a half inches long, I would say. We have her and a male, and the male over here is fully grown at about three and a half inches long. Yeah, they are really cute, but the reason why they are number four on our weirdest animals at snake discovery list is because of their tails. Their Imagine tails. Imagine that. Yeah, I mean, they're called the shield tailed agama for a reason. Look at these pokey tails. The spikes on their tail grow in like a circular pattern here, and their tails are super unique because what these guys do is they dig burrows underground like little mice. They dig tunnels underground, and at night they stuff themselves in the entrance or the opening of the tunnel with just their little pokey tail sticking out. They mm. plug the hole with their tail to protect themselves overnight. I do that same thing too. You do, yeah. Whenever you're scared or when you're yep. sleeping, you just stuff yourself in the bed and stick your butt yep. out. I'm in bed and Emily comes up. I'm like, butt! <laughs> yep, it, yeah. Oh God, yeah. <laughs> TMI guys, sorry. <laughs> they also show this behavior when they are being chased down by predators. They will just take off, dive into their burrow, but stop right at the entrance. So it's just their little pokey butt sticking out and no predator wants to chew on these spikes. Again, I feel very similar to these guys. <laughs> My God. There's too many similarities here. <laughs> they also are called the turnip butt agamas because they have this little extension on their tail as a little extra spike. Now, I have not been able to figure out what this extension is used for. If you guys know. The male's missing his. Yeah, he is missing his. This guy was a rescue of ours. He was surrendered to Adoption Island, and we decided to keep him and put him on display because he's so weird, and then we got him a girlfriend. Yep. So we are hoping to we get another. Them. 
They're yeah. adorable. They and really so are. Cute. The males are known for having a blue chin, which you can see right there. So this guy is in fact a male, and the females simply lack the blue chin. Since their tail acts as, well, a shield to them, that's exactly how they got their name, the shield-tailed agama. So that is number four on our weirdest Aww. reptiles at snake discovery list. Little pokey butts. Number three on our list is, really? Calm down, you're fine. She's not happy we took her boyfriend. No, she is not very happy at all. Number three is the mangrove snake. These are really weird snakes. They're awesome. They're beautiful too. Calm down, you're okay. Some are ornery. They're known for having attitudes. Our male actually isn't too bad though. Yeah, he's pretty uh, tame. Yeah, the mangrove snake is a gorgeous snake. They have beautiful contrast between the black and that bright yellow uh, striping down their body. And these are native to Southeast Asia. But what makes them weird are really all of the unique attitudes adaptations that they have. It's like Mother Nature was handing out strange body features and the mangrove snake said, I'll take them all. I'll take everything. So they're like the platypus of the snake world. They kind of are. Oh, we're going to get, I have platypus mentioned okay. in this okay. video later on because it gets even weirder like the platypus. These aren't anything compared to what we're about to see. Anyway, the mangrove snake, some of their weird features include their very slender body type or body shape, which indicates they live in trees being arboreal. They also have huge eyes with thin vertically oriented pupils which indicate that they are nocturnal and those big eyes help them see better at night and they are rear fanged venomous so this snake isn't going to kill a person which is why i'm holding him with my bare hands they are rear fanged just like hognose snakes are maybe or false water cobras or false water cobras yes um so basically what that means is the back teeth in their mouth are enlarged similar to the kukri snakes however a mangrove snake's teeth have a groove that run down the back of them and this goes for other rear fang venomous species too and they contain what is called a duvernois gland and that gland secretes or creates a special toxic saliva and it's located right behind their eyes it actually has a duct that connects to their back enlarged teeth and basically it releases their toxic saliva which then runs down the groove of those back teeth and gets chewed into their prey. It doesn't inject venom like a true fang on say a cobra or a rattlesnake does. Instead the saliva or venom just slides down the groove of that tooth. And again this is very similar to hognose snakes and false water cobras. But the mangrove snake has a unique saliva that seems to be specifically designed to immobilize birds. Which makes sense. They live in trees. Their primary diet is going to be birds. But scientists have noticed that these will also eat other reptiles and they'll sometimes eat rodents. But when they test the mangrove snake's saliva and how it immobilizes various different animals, it's not nearly effective on rodents or reptiles as it is on birds specifically. So these have special saliva that is made for eating birds. So again, slender bodies, big old eyes, uh, rear fanged, and just gorgeous colors. They're very sleek. I don't know. This is a gorgeous snake. Not that that makes it weird. All the other things make them weird. And that's why they're number three on our weird reptiles list. Okay, now we're getting into the really weird stuff. Number two on the weirdest reptiles here at Snake Discovery is the legless lizard or Sheltopusic, sometimes they're called. This is just the strangest reptile. We've had these for a while. This is Legolas. We've had her for a very long time. And honestly, what makes them weird? What makes them normal, really? It's the question there. They are the strangest reptiles, I think. One of the strangest reptiles I've ever met. And because they don't have legs doesn't necessarily mean that something is a snake. This is, in fact, a lizard. It just doesn't have legs, hence the name legless lizard. So a few of the differences between lizards and snakes that you can see here in the legless lizard are their external ears, which are the small little holes on the side of her head. Snakes don't have external ears. Their ears are internal. The legless lizard also has eyelids and can therefore blink its eyes. Snakes have scales over their eyes, they don't have eyelids, so therefore they can't blink. Also, the legless lizard's tail starts way up here, which means their rib bones actually stop here. This is the cloaca, or the convenient all-in-one hole that reptiles have. But if this was a snake, the cloaca would be all the way down here-ish, give or take. But since it's all the way up here, that's a sign of a lizard. And also, externally, if you look at the legless lizard's tongue, they have a fleshy tongue rather than a thin forked tongue like snakes do. And finally, look at her belly. Snakes have long belly scutes that go all the way across their belly, all the way down their bodies, and lizards, on the other hand, have the same shape of scales on their backs as they do on the belly. So her scales here continue all the way around. So again, that's another sign of her being a lizard and not a snake. Now, 
internally, there are some differences as well. If you feel your jawbone, our jawbones uh, are all one piece, right? They go all the way across as just one solid bone. A snake's jawbone is split in the middle, and that way they can spread each side apart and wrap it around their prey. Lizards, on the other hand, don't have a split jaw. A lizard's jaw is similar to ours in that it's just one piece. Legless lizards, have a solid lower jaw. So again, another sign of a lizard there and not a snake. Another thing that makes them a lizard are their teeth. Lizards typically have cone-shaped teeth rather than fang or like rear curved teeth that snakes do. And the legless lizard is no exception. They have cone-shaped teeth. They also have connected rib bones as lizards do, whereas snakes rib bones are split so they can spread them apart to swallow large meals. So a couple of those differences you obviously can't see because we can't look at her inside. But if you were to see the skeleton of a legless lizard, you'd be able to see all of those unique features on the inside. But yeah, this is a weird animal. They're native to Europe and Central Asia, where they live in scrublands and like brushy areas. I, for the longest time, thought they were fossorial and lived underground, but recently learned that they are more terrestrial. They dig around in the dirt a little bit, but they definitely are found more on land than underground, digging around in bushes and other shrubs. But yeah, they are weird, weird animals, guys. Don't they also have a line that stretches so they can breathe? Yeah, in case you haven't already noticed, or you might be wondering why she has these lines running down either side of her body. These are called lateral lines, and they allow her to expand expand her body to make room for large meals or to make room for females that are gravid and therefore have eggs. It's very similar to like your suitcases at home that have that special zipper that you can unzip so they expand and you get some more storage capacity on the inside. That's essentially the purpose of the lateral line on the legless lizard. But yeah, there you have it. Number two on the weirdest reptiles here at Snake Discovery is the European legless lizard. The lizard without legs. <laughs> and finally, the number one weirdest reptile reptile we have here at Snake Discovery. The whole reason we're doing this video. Honestly, this animal inspired this entire video. It is by far weirder than any other species, in our opinion, that we have here on display in our zoo is the Calabar Python, otherwise known as the Burrowing Python. And first of all, weird thing about it, it's not even a species of python at all. This is a type of boa constrictor, guys, but it's named the Burrowing Python or Calabar Python. That's because it was originally believed to be a python, and it spends a lot of its time underground, which is why it was called the Burrowing Python, but it was reclassified after a genetic analysis in 1993 to the Boidae family after it was discovered to be part of an ancient branch of the boa family tree. It has no close living relatives, it is the only species in its genus that is currently living on planet Earth, and because of all the confusion of what it is, their common names include both python and boa, like calabar python, calabar boa, burrowing python, burrowing boa, and so on and so forth. And obviously the ones that contain the word boa are the ones that are more technically correct because they are a species of boa, not a python at all, but they are still commonly referred to as the calabar or burrowing python. Because if you think about it, 1993 is not that long ago for a reclassification. Now one of the most widely known facts about the differences between pythons and boas is that pythons lay eggs and boas give live birth, but the burrowing boa is like the platypus in that it doesn't want to listen to the rules and even though it's a boa it lays eggs and the eggs are big eggs too like the eggs are big enough to be about half of the weight of the female after wow. she lays them ridiculously big eggs the calabar or burrowing boa is considered to be fossorial meaning it spends a lot of time underground and they are known to be raiders of rodent nests or burrows so basically as they're digging underground they run into a rodent nest they just eat all the babies and then keep on digging nice they're great little burrowers that's a sweet way to get food yeah very opportunistic yeah they have a very blunt head and tail which gets them the name the two-headed boa as well and they have really the same thickness to their body from the head all the way down to the tail and this is meant to confuse predators and make them think that their tail is actually their head and they go even a step further with this weird trait in that their tail has a partial ring of bright white scales which is meant to draw the attention away again from the head i did not know i thought he had an Im or like a imperfection on his tail no that's just this yeah. species thing i totally thought that was like oh he got burned or something Thing. Wow. Nope, All just right. a partial ring to confuse predators. <laughs> 
Confused and Ed. Yeah, I guess not to confuse, just to distract them. Like, oh, wow, something bright and white. Yeah. Maybe I'll focus on that. I'll play with its butt. Yeah, instead of the head. So they stay safe in the long yeah. run. Pretty smart, actually, but super weird. Actually, when they are threatened, they will first freeze their bodies and slowly move the tail to distract predators. And kind of, they show off that white band around their tail, hoping that the predators then go after the tail instead of their head. But if that fails, and they're still being attacked relentlessly by the predator, they give up on the freezing thing, and they curl up into a ball, and they look like poop. <laughs> okay, so they don't actually look like poop. Well, they do, but that's not the reason why they curl up into a ball. It's even got like little corn kernels in it. <laughs> he does! Well, what they do when they're curling up because they're scared is they still take that tail, and they thump it on the ground next to them to, again, distract the predator into going after their tail instead of their very precious head. I mean, <laughs> wouldn't getting bit, like, the tail off still be a pretty bad thing for this snake? Yeah, but not as bad as getting That's your head true. bit off. So, you know, they have to um, decide what's most important. But again, they're so weird. They rarely bite. They have like no prey instinct. Even wild caught ones, which pretty much all Calabar boas in captivity are wild caught. Very few individuals have been able to breed these guys. Uh, they're all this friendly. Like you pick them up from the wild. Not that I've done it, but I've seen people do it. You pick them up and they're this nice. They just curl up <laughs> into a ball. Curl up into a ball. They don't care. Yeah, he's got his head, little, little head poking out. Yep. Which if so they- that is his head. That is his head, not his tail. Yep, you can see the little eyeball right in the middle of the screen there. Such a derpy look to him too. When they are threatened, they have their head tucked in the middle of their body to protect it, of course. Makes so sense. he's actually, even though he's curled out, he's not feeling threatened right now because he's not thumping his tail on anything just and his around. head is out in the open. Yeah. yeah. So this guy was recently surrendered to our adoption island program and we're like, what a weird snake. The Calabar python, which is not even a python in the first place. Yeah. And they're a boa and they lay eggs and they look like poop and they thump their tail and they have a rig. They're really weird guys. So we are going to be very excitedly adding this guy to our zoo once he's taken enough meals for us and we're comfortable putting him on display so that you can all see him in person the poop python you also might need poop to come for a tour to see him because he's probably gonna bury himself yeah being fossorial which if you want to remember what fossorial means just think of where you find fossils underground that's how i remembered it in college yep. so being fossorial he's gonna be underground hidden in a substrate here in the zoo all day maybe if you join one of our night hikes he'll come out at night but if you come during the day just attend one of our uh, guided tours here in the zoo and our zookeeper will probably be taking him out quite frequently because we've all fallen in love with Mr. Poop Snake. He doesn't have a name. No, he doesn't. Oh, no. Burrowing right. Boa. I guess we need a name mm. for him. Needs to be something poop related, yeah. I think. <laughs> oh, my gosh. What do we name you, dude? What are the uh, poop's name in Isaac? Binding, Binding of, of Isaac? Isaac? Yeah. I don't know. I know I the little ones one. are called Drips. Drips? Yeah. I can't remember what the bigger ones are called. And we need your help, guys. Give yep. us a good name for this burrowing boa, and we will add him to our zoo so you can all meet him in person. Uh, but yeah, this was by far number one weirdest reptile that's here at Snake Discovery. So I hope you enjoyed today's list. Let us know in the comments below which of our top five weirdest reptiles was your favorite in today's video. Or if you've been to our zoo and you know of a weirder one that we have in here. Yeah, did we miss one? Maybe we missed one. Yeah, let us know in the comments if we missed a, an even weirder reptile than the it's all subjective anyway. We just think it these is. ones are weird. He looks like poop, guys. <laughs> My gosh. Okay, thank you guys for watching. Thank you, Patreon backers, for your amazing support. And we'll see you next time. The poop snake. Oh, look at him in all his glory.